it is better to look broke and have money than to look fabulous but fabulously broke. Hello, what's up everybody? You're welcome back to my channel. My name is Gordon Patrick. If you're new here, my channel talks about self and interpersonal development in all facets of life. In today's video, I want to discuss something quite important. Something that if you are in your 20s, you seriously don't want to miss because it's more like if you miss out on what I want to say, you are going to miss out forever. <laughs> so whatever thing you're doing, whether you're with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, whatever place you are, whether you're in a party or in a club or whatsoever, please, 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 please kindly leave whatever thing you do and focus on this video because it's going to be one important video you don't want to miss. Also on today's video, I'll be talking about level up in your finances in your 20s. I'll be giving you tricks, hacks, ways on how to level up in your finances in your 20s. So if you are interested in how to level up in your finances, money is, money rule the world, money is everything. And finances is just about the life wire that keep you going in as much as this earth is concerned. So you are interested. <laughs> no, say the truth, you are interested. There's no possibility that you're not interested in money when it comes to money, when it comes to finances and all that. So drop whatever thing you are doing. Since you are interested, let's, let's dive right in. So before we dive into the hacks and tips on how to level up your finances in your 20s, I want to say this, this video will be categorized in two segments. The first segment will be talking about the hacks and tips on how to level up in your finances. Why the, sec the, the second segment will talk about budgeting. The reason why I'm bringing this second segment is because most of the times I've actually um, see people talking about budget and planning. I'm actually see people talking about how to level up in your finances, but no one has actually had the time to draw up a proper plan so that the audience will say, okay, this is a plan where I'm going to draw. So I'm going to use the 50, 30, 20 principle of budgeting to show you people on how you could draw up your plan, how you could come up with a financial plan that will help you. It will be a financial plan and budgeting on how you are going to save your money, how you're going to treat your income. So that last part is quite important. So I urge everyone to stay to the end of that last part. So the first hack on how to level your finances in your 20s is to stop trying to live up with the Kardashians. The Kardashians. <laughs> when we talk about the Kardashians, I'm pretty sure that it's rich something in your head. We are talking about living a, a rich life. Stop comparing yourself with others. Everybody was not born equal. Everybody's finances are not the same. Everybody's income are not the same. So stop trying to feed yourself into people's shoes because it's going to be a calamity for you. It's going to be something you would not want to see or you will not like at the end of it all it is better to look broke but have money than to actually look fabulous and you are fabulously broke or fabulously poor so stop trying to live the life people are, are, are living you don't want to you 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 really do not want to post pictures or you don't you don't really want to spend a whole lot of middle a whole lot of money just to post pictures on Instagram so that you can impress people who don't actually care or you can impress people you don't like or you can impress people impress people who do not really have time. When you want to level your finances in your 20s, these are things you should not do. These are things you should not do. You should look for a way to secure your, your money. You should look for a way to, to build your finances in a more reasonable way. You have to live below your income, not living above your income. Living below your income simply means there are some certain things you have to do. Number one, living below your income simply means you have to stop buying on impulse. Some people have, have, have actually cultivated the habit on buying, or on buying on impulse. Why would you buy on impulse? You necessarily would buy things you need rather than things that you don't want. Because most of the times, when you buy on impulse, they, they end up being a total waste. You waste money buying things on impulse. At the end of the day, it's either you abandon that thing or you dash it out to someone or you just realize that you're not using that thing anymore. So what's actually the need to buy on impulse? That's why you have to have a financial plan in your head. You have to have a planning on how your budget is. You have to track your budget each, each and every time so you don't buy on impulse. Another hack 
on how to level your finances in your 20s is to stop eating out regularly. I said regularly. Stop eating out regularly because it's not going to help your finances. No, it's not going to. Your finances are not going to smile when you're always eating out all the time. Food outside are actually expensive. I'm, I'm not saying you should never eat outside. There are times where we can actually give excuses for ourselves, like you don't have the opportunity, you don't have the time to prepare food at home. You get? Those are the times where you can actually eat food outside. I'm not particularly against that. What I'm particularly against is to make it a conscious habit or an unconscious habit to always eat outside. Eating outside means your budget or your money is in the line. Because foods outside are quite expensive as compared to food you could prepare in your home and probably eat better, eat more healthy, and it nourishes your body more than some meals you buy out there. So the way to actually level your finances in your 20s is to stop eating out regularly. If you feel like you want to go for a function, you want to go to work early hours in the morning, then that's where discipline comes in. You could get up early hours in the morning, no matter the gender, whether it's a female, whether it's a male. After all, most chefs in, in, in the society today are male. So you should learn how to get up early hours in the morning and prepare your meal. You should actually plan how your meal will go like. Like me, there's a planning I have. I know I might sound a little bit archaic, I might sound a little bit different from what the idea you people have over there, but this little hack or this little practice or tricks has actually saved me and it keeps saving me a whole lot of money. How do I do mine? I have a kind of job that I go to work before it's 6.30. I want this thing to actually play in your head so that you understand what it means. I work from Monday to Saturday. It simply means I practically have no time whatsoever to prepare food. I could as well order food from Chimak. I order food from different places, from different areas. You get comfortably order food. But would I do that? No, I will not do that. So how I draw up my plan is very simple. I prepare my meal once every week. On a Saturday, I could prepare soup. I could prepare stew. I could prepare a whole lot of stuff. Since I have fridge, I could store them inside of a fridge. Then in between the week, all I need to do is to just bring out one or two stuff out of the fridge, then warm it, and I eat my food. Most times, I have even if I have to prepare one or two stuff. They are still the same thing I bought from the market on that Saturday. Maybe like spark, maybe some other vegetables and some other stuff. So that is how I draw mine. So if and it has saved me a whole lot of money. I could re re remember when I got my first job, I could remember that I, I was spending a whole lot of money outside, so much money. But when I realized that cooking your own meal could save you a lot, number one, it makes you eat healthy, and number two, it saves you the, it saves you a cost. So I decided to actually move away from that aspect of eating regularly, and now my money my money is actually with me. Like, I save a lot. So, if you're interested, you can actually buy into this idea. But I just feel like every normal person would possibly buy into this idea because it saves money a lot. So, the only thing you need to do is to try it. Try it first. Listen to me and try it. If it doesn't work for you, then you can quit. But you have to try. But if it works for you, if it works for you, Remember to give me a call. Remember to maybe subscribe to my channel as a way of thanking me <laughs> that these particular tips actually helped. It helps to stop eating regularly outside, to prepare your own meals at home. There are different benefits it gives you when you prepare your own food. I mean, so today, make it as a plan that from next week, you stop eating outside, you, you stop eating regularly, you prepare your own meals. The third hack on how to level your finances in your 20s is to stop saving all your money in the same account. Now, this, this might sound a little bit funny, but it actually do work. This is how it goes. For those of you who don't actually have discipline when it comes to money, you are my primary target. Yes, <laughs> you are my primary target because this is how it works. Do not save all your money in a particular account if you are not disciplined enough. Number one, how do you save your money so that it's going, to, it's going to help build your finances? Number one, you save it in a fixed deposit account. 
Saving your money in a fixed deposit account actually have terms and conditions. You could actually tell them you want to save it for six months, for one year, for two years, for three years, depending on what the, the kind of plan you're comfortable with to discuss with your bank. So with that, it simply means on no account will you ever withdraw money from that fixed deposit. Because you're, you're trying to tell the bank that you're never going to withdraw money from that place until the time it gets the time where uh, the time it gets the time. So that is just a thing. The second point on how to do this particular trick is to put your money in a savings account, but <laughs> you want to listen to this, listen very uh, carefully. Put your money in the same in the savings account, but do not request for an ATM card. An ATM card means you could withdraw money through ussd it simply means you could withdraw money for from an atm it simply means you could withdraw money from a pos vendor so these three things are places there where if you don't have discipline you can easily go there and withdraw money from but imagine a scenario create a picture in your head that you do not have an atm card <laughs> and you cannot go to the bank so this free stuff will definitely not come into any option. So it simply means you will be restricted in such a way to spend more money. These tricks are tested, they are trusted, they are approved, and they are successful. You could try it as well. I've had friends that they've actually taken upon these tricks and it actually worked for them. For people who don't have discipline, but if you have discipline that... If your money could actually be saved in a particular account, maybe savings account, and you can never touch them no matter what, then this particular trick is not for you. But if you are a person who is not disciplined with your money, then it is a more so this is this trick is for you. This hack is for you. So try it today, try it tomorrow. In short, try it from now on. You could call your bank, you could go tomorrow to the bank and and, and restructure everything, whatever you could create another account again and Try these tricks. If it doesn't work, okay, let's see what will happen. It will definitely work. The fourth hack on how to level your finances in your 20 is to invest and have a second stream of income. Investing to come in a, it could come in the form of investing in yourself, like learning a new skill. It's not gain saying the fact that the 2020 came with a whole lot that it actually knocked people off their feet. It gave people a, a different dimension to actually see life or to reason. So in this 2021 and coming 2022 or 2023, you don't just want to sit back idle or you, you, you base your mind on one stream of income. You have to diversify these things. So investing in learning a language will go a whole lot way. There are languages out there that pays a lot because language is, is, is one of man's hallmark is something that will always be with man when you're traveling you meet language barriers when you when foreigners come into your country they face language barriers when their language barriers could occur in different places in as much as we have different languages tons of thousands in their numbers out there in the world so if you want you could leverage on learning a, a language to become an interpreter to, 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 to solve people's problems, to be the mi middleman be between negotiations or to be the middleman between a whole lot of stuff. So language is a real business. You could use it for an interpreter to work in a company or, or to be hired or a, on a contract basis or stuff like that. Two languages that are actually in vogue right now, number one is Chinese. China has one of the largest world economy. And they are trying to spread their tentacles here and there. So they are trying to propagate their language. So in, in, in a bid to do this, they are in every part of the world because they know that their companies are scattered across the world. So they need interpreters. They need people who could act as a middleman between them and their employees. So you could be that one to fit into this. So... There's, there's no excuses whatsoever in your 20s to start to start saying, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to learn, I don't want to, there are things to learn. The other aspect of language, again, is German. It's actually paying now. People are learning German language to travel to Germany and study. You could have a new path for yourself, a career prospect for yourself by learning language. There are some other skills you have to learn as a, as a person. 
you, you could learn fashion designing, you could learn uh, video editing, you could learn video production, you, you could learn um, tailoring, you, there are numbers of skills you could learn out there. So do not limit yourself in a confine trying to give excuses, trying to blame your government. Your government is not a problem for your poverty. Government might actually have contributed in a way that doesn't, call, uh, doesn't create an enabling environment for you, but you as yourself, you're a human being. Human beings should be flexible. They are bound to be flexible. So do not hang all the whole blames on the government. You have your own portion of blame to learn. So to, 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 to have your own portion of blame to take as well. That's why I'm coming to you today to tell you that there are lots of skills you have to learn. Get so you can actually learn the skill of affiliate marketing, you can actually learn the skill of Quora. There are lots of them, thousands of them. If you are less informed about this thing, because I, I cannot practically give you the list or the rundown of every particular skill you can actually have, because there are lots of them. So, what I'll tell you today is to go on Google and type how um, and type the, the, the fast pain skill in 2020 or 20. 2020, 2021, 2022. Then you will get the result. From there, you could see if it's something that you can actually do. You could just choose one or two. Definitely, you will see one or two you will choose. So investing yourself, is, again, can actually come in other areas where you could be sleeping bond is actually generating you revenue. You could invest in shares. You could invest in bonds. You could invest in real estate. Real estate in the form that you could buy houses, which you could sell later on. You could buy land, which you could sell later on. Imagine how land appreciate. Imagine how houses could appreciate. So these are the little hacks that in your 20s, you don't have to joke with it. It's very simple. We have to make this money. Seriously, we really have to make this money. There's no excuse whatsoever. Gone at those days where things were actually restricted. Now you have no reason whatsoever. You have no reason whatsoever. You could start small. You could start big. You could start at any level you feel like. There are lots of things to, to invest your money in. You can invest your money in different things that could, even when you're sleeping, you will learn a lot. You could also learn skills like you, YouTube. Like what I'm doing right now, it's a goal. Though YouTube is not actually an easy thing. And there's no, there's no endeavor or there's no adventure that is quite easy. You have to Tell yourself that you will do it, a can-do spirit. So it simply means even if you're, you, you could learn how to edit videos on YouTube, you could learn how to post videos and all that, monetize your skill on YouTube, monetize your skill out there. You could learn um, how to make up, you could learn how to sew. You could, they are, if I keep talking about this, I could talk for more than five days about the skill you could learn. So this is just an advice. Even if you have to sound in your head properly, that's why I'm repeating it. So please, get your boot off that chair. Go look for something to do. There's no excuse. There's no excuse whatsoever. Get your boot away from there. Go and look for something to learn. There are a whole lot of things. So the number fifth tip you can actually base your mind on is to get yourself away from positive scheme or get rich syndrome. This particular thing, in your 20s, if you really want to level up in your finances in your 20s, these are things you should actually run away from. You don't want to start going into an investment you know nothing about because it's going to drain your money. It's going to suck your money dry. So you only want to invest in a particular thing which you have concrete knowledge about. If it's cryptocurrencies, make sure you know what you're venturing into. Whatsoever investment, whether it's land investment, or investing in real estate, or investing in whatsoever, have a practical knowledge on how that terrain works. If not, then you might just end up broke. You might just end up or you might just go back to how you were in the past. So in as much as we are trying to build finances in, the two, in our 20s, in, in 2021, 2022, do not rush into an investment you do not have any knowledge about. Ponzi scheme are actually fast way of getting rich. Rich are actually fast way of getting rich, but they're actually fast way as well to drain your finances. The ratio is just 7 is to 30, which simply means that seven, there's a 70% possibility that you're going to lose and end up broke. And it's only a slight percentage of 30 that you might actually make it. So choose which path you want to belong to. But definitely go away from things that you spend a whole lot of because it's going to cripple your finances a whole lot. I'm telling you from 
Okay, I'm telling you from experience. <laughs> Hack number six on how to level your finances in your 20s is to give responsibly. Nobody has actually become wealthy by giving foolishly. So there are some seven things you have to say no to. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you might be saying, okay, what about giving out to charity and all that? Yes, you could do that. I'm not asking you not to give out at all. I'm saying give out responsibly. You should learn the principle or the concept of saying no to some certain things that will cripple your finances, that will destroy your life and all that. It is not every dick, Tom and Harry that you want to give money to. You should learn how to give wisely. You should learn how to spend your, your money on, on things that will not cripple your finances. So in whatever thing you do, definitely you have to give wisely. You could be asking, now, what about paying your tithes? What about giving to the needy, to the poor and all that? Yeah, you could actually give all those things. But before you actually give all those things, make sure you've paid yourself. Once you get your income, your monthly income or whatever stream of income whatsoever, make sure you pay yourself first before you start paying others. Paying yourself first means you have to save money, you have to invest money, you have to pay your bills, you have to pay your you have to pay a whole lot of things about your needs before you start looking for a way to pay others. Even the most richest persons in the world like Bill Gates, like Matika, but they, in, they actually involve themselves in charity. But how do they do that? Would Mark Zuckerberg or would um, um, Bill Gates actually use their net worth, the total sum of it, and push it into a charity? Never. They can never do that. They must have paid themselves very well, paying themselves by paying their staff, paying whatever logistics that actually takes care of the network and all that before they actually give into the side. You get You can actually give money, but give wisely. Because if you end up spending your whole money on some family members, on some friends, on some charity and all that, what will happen to you when you, when you are broke? <laughs> it's a big question, right? Well, what will happen to you? Manna will fall from heaven? Maybe manna don't fall these days. Manna do not fall these days. So the best thing you want to do to yourself is to give responsibly. You get So pay yourself first before you start paying others. It's better for people to call you a wicked person, a stingy person, a person who cannot spend money, you are still heartless and all that, but you are rich. It's better to be it to be called a good is better it is better to be called a wicked man but being rich rather than to be called a good man and being broke if you've actually watched up to this part of my video it simply means you're interested in all the hacks on how to level your finances in your 20s so i would sincerely urge you to click or to strike or to hit the subscribe button below and give my video a thumbs up it's going to help me i'm going to see it as, as a kind of support on what i'm doing so thank you in advance so over to the last tip on how to over to the last hack on how to level up in your finances in your 20s is to save money i cannot shout this thing enough save like save money it's not possible that you want to be finances it's not possible that you want to be anything whatsoever without having savings it's not possible whatsoever you have to have savings that you reinvest to actually build you more income here and there so if you're not saving then it's practically no need to even work in the first place because not saving is actually going back to being broke so you have to save one of the hacks on how to level up in your finances in your 20s is to save money you have to after you actually strike the a difference or you have to dis decipher between your needs and your wants once you're able to know what your needs are then you should be able to save enough money do not spend on impulse do not get entangled with um, people who are above your class live beneath your your income do not make comparison with people do not want to appear rich on social media do not want to go eat out regularly all these things i've said from the first point to the six points are things that will help you save money. Save this money in, in your account so that you could use it to reinvest 
in your future. You could really use it to reinvest maybe in your marriage, reinvest in your career, reinvest in whatever thing that will create a career prospect for you, a career path, a carve out a niche for yourself. So just save in, in a whole lot. So saving could actually help you to invest in your skill learning. Saving could actually help you in whatsoever thing you want to do. So the most important thing is to save. And I'm going to talk extensively about how you are going to save using the 50, 30, 20 principle. In the next segment, I talk about at the start of this video, which happens to be segment number two, coming up in less than a minute from now. So I urge you to stick by and move over. I want to take you guys to the classroom, back to the classroom. Let's go draw some budget. Let's draw, let's go back to the classroom and draw some budget. Enough of this, enough of this plenty talking. Let's go to the classroom right now. Let's draw the budget. Let me give you the principle, the 50, 30 principle on how to draw a budget so that you live a financial free life and a prosperous life. So over to the classroom. You're welcome to the segment, the second segment of this video. Remember I told you earlier on I was going to use the 50, 30, 20 principle to explain everything on how you could draw a budget plan for yourself. So you're having a visual representation of what it actually means, where the 50% represent your needs, where the 30% represent your wants, and the last percent, which happens to be the 20%, represent your savings. So now that you have a visual representation, let's break each and every one of these numbers and give an example of each so that you can engage in your own personal finances based on the metrics you are seeing in front of you. First thing first, there's something you really need to take note of. This budget schematic can only work after you must have paid your tax, which simply means we're working with a net income. So like what you can see on your screen now, we have the 50%, which happens to be the first part. What is under the 50% is the needs, that's regular living expenses, which has food, housing, utility, that has water, electricity, and gas. In the course of the video, I talked about prioritizing your needs against your wants. So needs basically are things that will greatly inconvenience you or simply you literally cannot live without, which happens to be shelter and everything you're seeing on your screen. What's the next one. This um, this bar is actually thirty percent, which actually which is your wants. So your wants are your regular demands. Under your regular demands, you could see you could see a whole lot of stuff that you could possibly do without. You could see your normal shopping. You could see your normal dinner out. You could see hobbies. You could see Uber, boat, taxi fare. Depending on the country you are, you could see recharge cards. You could see Netflix. Netflix and cheese. <laughs> you can actually also see your DSTV and your new phones, people want to buy new phones, new bags, and so on. So these are actually ones that cannot greatly inconvenience you whatsoever. These are things that you could possibly live without. Last part of it is the 20%, which happens to be the savings. What you should be saving. So under it, we have emergency for we know emergencies can actually arise here and there. We cannot practically um fight against emergencies it could actually happen here and there so you have to reserve some amount of money for those emergencies also we have the investment fund this investment fund simply means that you would not save all your money inside of the bag or inside of an account you have to diversify your fund diversifying your fund simply means you have to scatter your money in different areas maybe invest in shares invest in bonds invest in real estate and there are lots of things to invest your money on so now that you, you've understood the budget schematics, so I want to tell you that this 50, 30, 20 principle is something which you can actually use. It could benefit you because this is the safest way you could actually draw up your budget. You know that once you receive your salary in a month or once you receive your, your, receive your income, whether it's coming in a month or in a week or thereabout, you, these are the places you want your money to be. To go into, but I want to re. I, I really want to say this. I know that for some people it might be hard, but this is where discipline comes inside. This is where planning comes into play. So you have to be disciplined enough to carry these principles to the very last. You have to try. You just have to try. Maybe start by trying from a month. I know maybe just maybe you don't have the attitude of doing this, but you could start somewhere. There's no harm in starting. So just start somewhere and. 
it's going to pay off. I know it's going to pay off. Hey guys, you're back from the classroom. I hope that classroom was quite effective. It was quite interesting. I hope you find it helpful. And even from the first hack I talk about to the seventh hack, I hope all the points are well articulated. I hope you found it very interesting. If you find them interesting, you might want to subscribe on the or, um you might want to subscribe to my channel if not if you've not done it by this time, or you might want to give my video a thumbs up so that it's going to help with the YouTube algorithm. So on this note, if there's anything you feel like you want to add more about uh, hacks on how to level up your finances in your 20s on the uh, budget plan I just um, drew, I just gave you guys to 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 see then you might leave the tip on the comment section below for everyone to learn. Even how I'm, I'm in the position to learn as well. It's not like I've gotten all my um, all, all my pieces together. I'm actually still struggling in some selling areas, but we have to struggle together. It's a planning, one step at a time. We are going to get there. We will definitely get there at some point. So just leave your comment down below and do not forget also to subscribe to my channel. Until then, I want to say... Have a wonderful, prosperous, miraculous, and lovely week, week ahead of you. God bless you. Ciao, ciao.